So in the previous video, you learned how to determine the electric field of a single charge. In this video, you will learn how to determine the electric field due to a system of charges. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's go ahead and try a slightly more complicated problem. In this problem, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the electric field that is directly between a negative four coulomb charge and a si negative six coulomb charge. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by just drawing my frame of reference. And I'm gonna say that to the right is positive, to the left is negative, up is positive and down is negative. The other thing I'm gonna do is draw the field lines around my two charges. So I'm gonna start by just drawing the lines on my left-hand charge. And because it's a negative charge, I know that my field lines are going into my charge. However, the only field line I really care about is the field line that P, this point, is on. So really the only thing I care about is this field line that's going to the left. Then I have my, my uh, field lines due to my right hand charge. And those are again going into my charge. So what I know is that my charge on the left, which I'll go ahead and name Q1, is pulling, it has an electric field that's going in the opposite direction as my charge on the right, which I'm going to call Q2 at point P. And I know that the electric field due to Q1 is going to be negative, so I'm going to call it negative E1, and the electric field due to Q2 is positive. So I'm going to call that positive E2. And that's just from the direction of the arrows, uh, the, sorry, the direction of the field lines for both Q1 and Q2. So now I am ready to start walking through my problem. I'm going to go ahead and start with my givens. So first, I know, I know that Q1 is equal to 4 coulombs, and I'm going to ignore the signs on my charges so I'm going to ignore that negative sign because I am going to compensate for the signs of my charges when I set up my equation. So I'm going to say Q1 is 4 coulombs, Q2 is 6 coulombs, and then I can also say that R1 is equal to R2 is equal to what I'm going to call R, and that is 0.2 meters. And I can only do this because I am looking at the midpoint between my two charges. So if P was farther to the left or farther to the right, I would have to use two separate radii for R1 and R2, but I made this problem a little bit easier and decided to make them the same distance apart from, or decided to put our point halfway between our two charges. So after that whole long spiel about givens, I can write up my unknown. And that is gonna be so easy because we know that our unknown is gonna be the electric field at point P, which I'm just gonna call regular E, not E1, not E2. So let's go ahead and do our equation. So electrical fields are really nice because an electrical field at a point is just equal to the sum of the electrical fields due to all of the charges affecting that point. So the electric field that we're trying to find is equal to E1 plus E2. But from my picture, I know that E1 is negative and E2 is positive. So um, the directions of those fields. I know e, E1's in the negative direction, E2 is in the positive direction. So I will say that E is equal to negative E1 plus E2, or E is equal to negative KQ1 over R squared plus KQ2 over R squared, leaving me ready to move forward to substituting and solving. So... Let's go ahead and rewrite our equation for the electric field, but I'm gonna go ahead and factor out my k over r squared. So what I'll get is that e is equal to k over r squared time, times negative q1 plus q2, or e is equal to 
9 times 10 to the 9th over 0 0.2 squared times negative 4 plus 6. So what that gives me is that e is equal to 9 times 10 to the 9th times negative 4 plus 6, or 2, divided by 0 0.2 squared. And when I stick that in a calculator, I get that e is equal to 4.5 times 10 to the 11th newtons per coulomb at point P. So before I continue, I want to talk about a very special case of the situation we just talked about. Um, and that is when our two charges are equal. So if I have two equal charges, so same sign, same, same charge, um, same magnitude, same sign, um, and I'm trying to find the electric field, electrical field halfway between them, what I'll do is I can use that same equation I, found, I used in the previous problem, but if I look at this single part of it, that negative Q1 plus Q2, what I get is negative 0.4 plus 0.4 or 0. So the electrical field halfway between two equal charges of the same sign is going to be 0 newtons per coulomb, which means that if I stuck a charge directly in between these two negative 0.4 coulomb charges, it would feel nothing. So I just have one last thing I want to talk about before we go over, um, before we go over our takeaways, and that is the electric field due to a line of charge. Or, so what I have is I have my point P directly above this long continuous wire on the ground. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my field lines at a few different points along my wire. And I'm going to go ahead and draw their direction um, at point P. So here is going to be this point. At this point, it's going to kind of look like that. Pretend that's a straight line. And again, at all of my other points, I have all of my field lines at point P due to my wire. So what's going to happen, and I think you can maybe see this already, is the horizontal components of my charge, of my, uh, of my electric field, are going to cancel out. So if I look at, for example, this leftmost point, my field looks like this if I break it down into its two components. And at the rightmost point, we have the exact same but in the op horizontal charge in the opposite direction. So directly above a line of charge, the electric field, E, is only in the vertical direct direction. So we have no horizontal components whatsoever. So let's talk about takeaways. First of all, um, our first two takeaways you might recognize from the previous video because again, we learned that electric fields can be used to determine the force different charges will feel. Uh, and we also reiterated the importance of using field lines to help you determine the direction of an electric field. In this video, you also learned that to find the field due to multiple charges, you need to add the fields of each individual charge together, keeping in mind the direction of those field lines at the point in space in which you are trying to find the field, since electric fields are vector quantities.